This is a square. Can you guess which spot that goes in? That's right, it goes in the square hole. And how about this rectangle? That one, that goes in there too. Up next, we've got this thin rectangle. Can you guess where that goes? That's right, it goes in the square hole. And up next, a cylinder. Hmm, I think that goes in the square hole. Now, we've also got this semicircle right here. Do you see a slot that would fit the semicircle? That's right, it's the square hole. Okay, up next, the triangle. We know what hole that goes into, right? That's right, the square hole. And up, last, up next, we have the arch. Can you guess it? It goes in the square hole. So after watching this uh, TikTok, I, I couldn't stop thinking about how it's just like the perfect example of a uh, first order optimal strategy or a foos. First order optimal strategy is just a strategy that requires the least amount of effort for the highest reward in a game. I never really spent a lot of time thinking about this when I was working on single player games, but I, I've run into it like every single playtest session that I've done on the multiplayer board game that I'm working on. A lot of the time you'll hear that um, optimal strategies in games are, are just a big no-no, uh, like the, the crux of a good game. I mean, God forbid that your game becomes solved and becomes a... So I just, I wanted to think about the difference here between optimal strategies and foos and uh, how they can help us make better games. And I'm talking about game design optimal strategy and not uh, like a zero sum matrix or a game theory problem optimal strategy. Um, I don't really know anything about that. So so to be clear, let's, um, let's think of some examples. If you're about to enter a hedge maze, uh, real life spoiler alert, at the entrance of a hedge maze, if you put your hand out against one of the walls and you walk through without ever lifting your hand, through all the turns and all the dead ends, you'll eventually find the exit. Or in a simple game like tic-tac-toe, again, spoiler alert, if you always move to block your opponent, you can always guarantee a tie uh, or a cat's game. In urban planning, there's a phenomena called desire paths or lines. Uh, so if you've ever seen a path that's been worn into the grass because it cuts a corner that's just a little bit more convenient, uh, you've experienced these kinds of first order optimal strategies. So let's just think about why people are always looking for these uh, optimal strategies. And uh, if you saw the video on loops, you know that your brain is always predicting. It predicts even before sense data is really processed. Uh, and if you do a quick search of Lisa Feldman Barrett, uh, she has an excellent way of explaining some very complicated neuroscience. Anyway, she reports that your brain does this predicting because it's just way more efficient metabolically uh, than processing and interpreting sense data for everything all the time. That would be exhausting. That's where it gets us in trouble because once we find a solution that works, your brain knows uh, that it can save its pennies, or in this case, sodium, iron, iodine, all that good stuff. So what does what's the first order part? What does that mean? The first order part is literally what it sounds like. It's the optimal strategy that you're likely to try first because it's the most obvious, it's the easiest to execute, and it has the most benefit. That's right, it's the square hole. Strategy in general is what you might call an emergent property, as in it emerges from the game system, but it wasn't explicitly put there. Uh, emergent properties are by definition almost impossible to predict, and, and so there's a limit to how much control we really have over them. Uh, so we can facilitate strategies, we can enable them, but usually they're not top down. So optimal strategies require time to develop. Uh, first order optimal strategies take less time and we can use them to our advantage uh, as heuristics, which is just a fancy way of saying teaching tools or rules of thumb. The reason this works is because if a player knows that something always works, then they can always lean on it uh, when they need to make a choice. 
And so we can use this as a tool for fighting away uh, paralysis by analysis, which is just something that happens when there's too many choices, the player has no idea what to do. So players will call foos uh, cheesing or cheese or cheesy strategies. Uh, and these are players that, you know, have already shed these early strategies for more skilled or nuanced ones because, you know, they have more practice. So like, for example, using the noob tube in, uh, in Call of Duty or using the big money strategy in Dominion, uh, maybe even taking the uh, taking an early game Drake sword in Dark Souls would be an example of a foo, foo type strategy. As the breadcrumbs go deeper and deeper into the dark depths of your design, the harder it is to find new ones. And, and this phenomenon is called the metagame. And the metagame is the game that exists outside of the game. Uh, it happens over time as people understand the game better. So this can be based on the content of the game, but it can also just be based on the creativity of the players and the discoveries that they make. They roll the die, fix it up. Big windmill slam. Oh uh, there seems to be a one-way spectrum from game to puzzle. And uh, one of the key features of moving from one side to the other is just time. And, you know, it's a noble goal to want people to keep playing forever. But, you know, I, I personally don't think it's a huge problem. Um, games are expendable and uh, some less than others. Uh, so even if a game can never be solved, if the metagame is slow or no longer interesting, eh, it might as well be solved. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's, uh, those are my thoughts on, on foos and uh, optimal strategies. I, thanks for checking out the channel. If you'd like to hear about any particular design topic, um, please go ahead, drop it in the comments. And if you're living in 2021, it's uh, very likely that I will cover it. This isn't sponsored, but my friend Corey built this dope teleprompter that I used for this video. Uh, you could find it at teleprompt.me and uh, try it out for free. It's, uh, it's activated by your voice and has all these features that make it easier to give speeches. And uh, if you're interested in making content like this or need a teleprompter for any reason, I uh, highly recommend it. When we, uh, when we say that a game has reached, uh, when we say that a game has a dominant strategy, that's just a way of saying that the optimal strategy has reached a point where the metagame has stopped changing. And so that, that's all that, I, I don't know. The, yeah, that's all that means. Uh, I'm trying to think of how to phrase that better. The square hole. <laughs>